What's up guys, it's your girl Skip Got Kicks. Um, back with a, the, another video. Um, this time I'm gonna do something a little bit different. A lot of my subscribers are always asking me like, you know, have you ordered from certain websites and can you tell me a legit reseller, dot, dot, dot. Um, so this time around for my white cements, I actually ordered a pair from DetroitKicks.com a long time ago, back when I knew that these were coming out. And because they had been sitting for a while, I ordered another pair from FinishLine.com. So I figured, you know, since they had been sitting, it'd be a good opportunity for me to do a side-by-side -side comparison uh, from a retail, directly from a retail um, site and directly from DetroitKicks.com. Um, I'll give a disclaimer that I have no affiliation with DetroitKicks.com. Like I said, I've ordered a pair of kicks from them once before and actually canceled my order because I got nervous. Uh, so I flaked, my bad. Um, but other than the fact that we both are from Detroit, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. Um, so I have no allegiance. So this is going to be an unbiased review. Um, and I'll give you the short version if you don't want to watch the full review. The shoes are legit in my perspective. Um, I looked at things that I noticed other you know YouTubers usually do to help us see what shoes are legit. So I looked at the boxes, the font on the boxes, the production stamp on the boxes, uh, the stitching, the shoe tr the shoe trees that come with it, um, underneath the, the insole, the actual stamping and stitching in the shoe, stuff like that. So those are the things that I use and we're going to get into the review. Hope you guys like it. Um, if you do, please, you know, give me some feedback, comments. Let me know if there's some other stuff you would like to see, other questions you have. Um, and hit the thumbs up for you, girl. So we're going to get into it. All right, guys, it's time for this side-by-side uh, -side comparison. Um, on our left is going to be the pair from Finish Line. Just got them in today, like literally a few minutes ago, my doorbell rang. And on the right is our pair from DetroitKicks.com, okay? So um, there are a few things in particular that I want to look at, just again, based off of like other reviews and legit checks that I think are usually places where you'll be able to find out if a kick is, is fake or not. Um, so I'm going to highlight them and... Let's get into it. Uh, so, first I'm going to start with the boxes. So, I'm going to put the shoes aside. So, I was kind of salty when I got the pit, the box from Detroit Kicks. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. There's like a gash right here. They, they actually came shipped in a box. Um, and I was like, dang, this sucks. And this happens even if you guys buy directly from retail stores. You know, sometimes they just mishandle the box and stuff like that. So I was hoping to get a really good box from Finish Line. And um, this joker got a big gash on the back side also. So it is what it is. Uh, one thing that you'll notice, these pairs, neither box... Let me get that down there for you guys. Neither of the boxes has the um, sticker here. Usually there's a sticker in the upper left-hand corner and it will indicate like the exact store that it came from and stuff like that that doesn't scare me because a lot of times when you buy directly from websites like nike.com they don't come with a sticker obviously because it's nike if i footlocker.com a lot of when you buy from the websites they don't have the stickers because usually the stickers are there for the retail stores um especially the big stores that they use to identify which store the shoe came from so that doesn't scare me so then i started looking at the fonts um on the boxes i really didn't there is no difference there are some differences between the two boxes, but not in, like, the fonts or anything like that. So the next thing, um, you look at the size size of the box. Um, they are both, I can tell you right now, the same size. Jump men are in the same location. That's not an issue. I open up the box more. The next thing you want to look for is the quality uh, stamp inside the box. So on the pair from Finish Line, let me get it for you guys. The stamp is here in the box, and it's red. The pair that I got from DetroitKicks.com, it's in the same location, but it's black. So then I went back and looked at some of my retail kicks to try to see if I could find differences in the stamping. And sure enough, there's a difference, so I didn't let that deter me or scare me either. Obviously, both came with the Jumpman stickers. There you go. Both the same. And the same paper. So, in short... The boxes, the box check, checked out good for me. Um, the next thing I wanted to check were the shoe inserts. So let me get, this one's kind of bent up. But you want to look and see that they have the same font. Let me try to zoom in. There you go. And this is kind of faint, but... Um, the shoe inserts, you may have to take my word for it because the lighting is kind of funky in here. They checked out 
quite good as well. Exact same. Okay. Bam, bam. So now what everybody wants to see are the shoes. Um, and I ain't going to lie to you guys. I was doing all good until I got to one point in the shoes and I started freaking out. But I'm good now. So this is the right shoe. Get the same right shoe here. Okay. Let me just focus. There we go. So this is exactly how the, both shoes came to me. Um, and again, um, if you stay tuned for the second half of the video, you'll understand some of the stuff that I have to say. But I'm, right now I'm going to focus just on the things that help me identify it as a legit check or not. Finish line pair, DetroitKicks.com pair. Okay. Um, so the first thing I try to look at on the outside of the shoe are the stitching. So if I hold these up, I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit. So you take a look at the stitching on the Detroit. This is the finish line pair, DetroitKicks.com pair. I really didn't notice any difference. Let me try to zoom in for you guys. There we go. The stitching is identical, okay? No issue there on the stitching. They passed the check. Um, the next thing that a lot of people want to look for is um, on the tongue. Also, the stitching on the tongue, because a lot of the times that's a giveaway, like the actual jump man and stuff like that. I've seen um, where fake education, he showed like differences in the, <laughs> the jump man on one of them looked like they had a boot. And that's how you could tell it was fake. So let's zoom in on that. There we go. Jump man checks out good as well as the stitching on the tongue. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to look at is underneath the shoe on the inside. So if you pull back the insole, what does the shoe look like inside? So I pull back the insole on both pairs of kicks. And this is what we got. Focus, man. Bow. So you'll see, you know, some of the red stitching. And this is the DetroitKicks.com pair. And this is the finish line pair. Finishline.com pair. I'll pull back the insert as well. And there you go. So check your stitching. Check, you know, for any stampings and stuff like that. And this is where it freaked me out a little bit. Because for some reason, on one of my finish line pairs. And this is the finish line pair. One of them did not have that same red on the outsole. You see it right here. Whereas on both of my DetroitKicks.com, they had it. So, I don't know. Um, but again, generally speaking, that wasn't something that to me stood out as being illegitimate. Alright guys, so last thing I'm going to do for this video is just do a... Not so much picking the shoe up, but I just want to do a round view of each one. So again, finish line pair on the left. Detroit Kicks pair on the right. Uh, one thing I noticed, I'm really taking something back here. So if you look at my finish line pair, uh, this right shoe is a little lopsided. I don't know if that's just because it's tied up so tight, laced up so tight, but uh, I don't like that. It, <laughs> if you look at uh, none of the other, the other shoe don't do it. Whatever. Um, so this is the front. Switch them, turn around to the back. So you guys can see. Okay. Again, finish line pair. Detroit kicks pair. You want to see some details on the Nike finish line pair? Detroit kicks pair. Here's a side by side between the two. Um, look at the, uh, if you look at the backs, you know, people, a lot of people talk about kind of like this widow's peak here. Again, this is the finish line shoe. It has it. If I scroll, let y'all take a look at the Detroit Kicks. Also, the left shoe has it. Again, a lot of people say also about the GS pairs, how, um, how different they are in quality to the men's, which sometimes that is true. I also have a men's pair. I may do a, a video just to compare the men's and the GS. 
um, for you guys. But this is it, man. I mean, you know, let's just see a side view. A little side shot. Like I said, uh, for for my purposes, for, as far as I can tell, you guys tell me if you see anything differently, but this this checks out legit in my book. It took a little while for him to get here. Um, I'm not wearing these shoes anytime soon anyway. The only downside was I couldn't give you guys a review very quickly. Uh, so if you want to see a thorough, in-depth review of the grade school size um, cement force, check out my girl's channel, Her Souls underscore 23. That's H-E-R-S-O-L-E-S -E underscore 2-3. She did a great review um, on the grade school cement forest, so I don't need to drain it because she's got a good one. Um, that's about it, y'all. Hopefully you uh, like the review. I know it was a bit lengthy, um, but I think it gives you guys what you were looking for, at least from a comparison, and hopefully things to check out. Now, I couldn't get very uh, good shot of the um, production dates, but both of them have a production date, starting date of 9... 9 2015 and the end date i thought it was like 9 26 or something like that 9 20 yeah 9 26 they both had the exact same production date so these jokers they made them quick they made them quick so y'all let me know what you think one of these pairs is probably going back i'm gonna i'm gonna see you know how i want to do it but uh i'm definitely excited to have this shoe um it may be a shoe that i actually double up on because as soon as i saw it i was like wow this is something i could wear with a lot of different things, jeans and shorts and all kind of stuff, summer, winter, whatever. So I'm excited to have them in the collection. All right, guys, so there you have it. Um, like I said, you know, from what I can tell, you know, the shoes are pretty much identical. The the color of the cement is exactly the same. The speckling is exactly the same. Everything checked out good, in my opinion. Um, so now I want to give you guys just some of my... Uh, you know, the way I think about resellers, the whole resale game, I know some people are opposed to it. For me, it's been beneficial because it may be days where I just don't feel like, you know, sitting around by my computer or refreshing the sneakers app on my phone at 10 o'clock in the morning. I may have other things that I need to do or getting up early in the morning. So it's been convenient. Um, you do pay a premium for it, especially depending on what time you actually place the order. You may see the prices are very high at first, or they start off reasonable at first and they spike up. It just, it varies. Um, so it's to each his own, whether or not you actually want to purchase from a reseller. Um, but there's some things that I want to talk to you guys about, some things I want you to think about. So if I were a reseller, and again, I haven't spoken to any resellers directly to get this input from them, but I was just thinking from my perspective, right? If I wanted to get into the resale game, there's a few ways that I would do it. Um, one, I would either be one that would get up early in the morning, standing outside camping and getting all my homies to camp outside to try to get pairs of shoes, get as many pairs as I can, like actually going from place to place to place. Um, two, if I happen to know somebody who owned a retail store, who was a manager at a Foot Locker or something like that, who would backdoor me a size run or two, if I had a couple of shops that I would go to, I would get them that way. Um, three, I would use a whole bunch of bots. Um, and try to take get my hand at like actually ordering them from Nike.com, Finish Line, Foot Locker, the different sites. And four, I would sell fakes, which I wouldn't because I ain't cut like that, but those are the four options. So when you think about the resale game, those are the things you got to think about and you got to set your expectations accordingly. So let's think about it. If this was somebody who, um, you know, was getting up every morning on Saturday to try to get as many pairs as they could. Well, um... If they were lucky and they were able to get them, then that means that they can't ship them out right away. So one thing that I respect about certain re resellers like DetroitKicks.com is like when you go on their site to actually look for a pre-order, they tell you approximately when these shoes are going to ship out. Um, same with the Kicks broker and other places, right? So be reasonable with them. Like, you know, on the one hand, they got to be honest and upfront and set expectations. Like most of the time, they're not going to ship out on the day of the release unless it's a pair that they got a little early or they were able to take care of all their pre-orders early on, which I have had happen. Um, so for my Maroon 6s, those actually shipped out on the day to release. So um, Triple Gear Co., I got them from him. He was able to ship them out on the day to release. Perfect. Um, but these jokers didn't ship out until I got a stamp a, a notification that the label had been created on the 17th, which was excellent. I don't think they actually shipped out to like the 20th, and I just got them on like the 22nd, 23rd. So it takes a little while. Um, so you got to be understand that, right? So in the second scenario is if they're ordering them from like Nike.com. If I order them from Nike.com on the 13th when they release, I'm not going to receive them from Nike.com until 
17th, 18th. It's going to be like a, you know, a t Wednesday, Thursday before I receive them, which means that the soonest that they can ship them out to you is going to be like a Thursday or Friday. So the number one thing I would say to people who are purchasing from resellers is be patient. Um, because if they're legit, you know, they got to get the shoe, they got to check their books and make sure they're balanced out, make sure they, they send in the right shoes to the right people. So they need probably a day of processing before they're ready to ship them out. So, um, and then on the side note, on the same note, I would say to actual resellers, the best thing you can do is actually communicate to your people. Like the people who are buying these shoes from you, you know that people are worried about, you know, getting scammed and worried about getting fakes and worried about getting their money like lost forever. So once you finally secure the pre-orders, maybe you, it takes you all day Saturday, you've been busting your butt. Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon, whatever, take the time to send confirmations to the people who have purchased your kicks and say, hey, your order has been secured. It will be shipped out in approximately two or three business days. Bam. That's the same thing Nike does, Amazon, you name it. In the day and age that we live in, you know, fast turnaround and constant communication is extremely important. And it should be really easy to do with social media and all the other stuff. Um, another thing I would say to people who are looking to buy from resellers, and again, this I've had this experience with retail stores as well, is the shoe. So, you know, I didn't go into that much detail when I did the overview, but the shoe that I have, and I've actually kind of tightened it up a little bit. When I bought this shoe, when I got the shoe, this is my shoe from Detroit Kick. When I got it, I immediately know, knew that it had been tried on. I knew right away. It came, you know, already, the laces were already loose, like this. And I could actually see lint from, like, somebody's socks that had them on. Um, doesn't terribly, doesn't upset me as much. Y'all know me. If you watch my channel, you know I love to keep my shoes as dead stock as possible. So it did kind of bother me a little bit that somebody else's foot had been in this. But the number one thing for me was to make sure it was legit. And it was. So um, set expectations. If these cats are buying the shoe from retail stores... Just like retail stores, when you go in there, somebody may have already tried the shoes on. How many times have you gone into a retail shop and was like, let me try on a four and a half, and you find out that really you need a five? Well, in trying on that four and a half, you may be leaving remnants from your socks and all kind of stuff. And the person that, that's bringing you the shoes is loosening them up so you can put them on your feet. And so it was clear that that's what happened to this. And I can actually do a comparison. So this is the finish line pair here, and this is the DetroitKicks.com pair. Again, I had actually tightened them up a little bit. So they were very loose, and they were unlaced. So I knew that they had been uh, tried on before. But, again, in the grand scheme of things, if it's a shoe that you want, a shoe that you didn't have to do any leg work for, if you're willing to live with it, then it should be cool. This is the first time, honestly, out of all my purchasing from resellers that a shoe came like this. But I ain't tripping. Um, I understand. I understand. So, um... You know, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. I think, you know, like I said, in the grand scheme of things, there's things that you just got to be mindful of. You got to be reasonable on both sides, right? If somebody is doing the legwork to purchase these shoes from you, they're probably going to charge you a little bit more. But on the same side, you got to probably be a little patient with them because they got to get the shoe. They got to check their inventory, check all of their boxes and everything, make sure that everything goes good, and then they have to send it to you. So my husband is tiptoeing around <laughs> Anyway, um, and for the resellers, please um, communicate to your people. You know, let them know the deal. Be upfront and honest with them. Don't tell them you're going to ship it the day of. You're not actually going to ship it the day of. We can be reasonable if you set expectations accordingly. So hopefully you guys like the video. Um, let me know if there's some more details you want to see. I'm probably also going to do a comparison between the men's and the GS just because I got another pair um, from one of my, my friends that just came in today. Um, and I got that from Triple Gear Co. Um, so I'll probably do a comparison um, just so you guys can see the differences between the men and the GS. So if you like it, hit the thumbs up for your girl, and I'll see y'all next.